Hello and welcome to the Daily Mule for Sunday, the 18th of August, 2024. Now you would imagine being a Sunday, there will be a lot of news going on. Well, you would be wrong because we've got some absolutely cracking news out of Scotland from the dailyrecord.co.uk who seem to have their finger on the pulse in terms of what's going on with young Daniel Kelly and they tell us today Celtic midfielder Daniel Kelly to seal a mill move this week as Fee agreed for early release. So we have agreed a deal with Celtic. So there you go. Uh, the 18-year-old had signed a pre-contract but is now set to join the London club ahead of schedule. And this was put up at, at uh, 18.39, 6.39 today. So quite late in the afternoon. Uh, Daniel Kelly is set to secure his exit from Celtic in the coming hours after the Hoops accepted an offer from Mill worth close to £400,000 plus add-ons for his early release. Uh, the 18-year-old penned a pre-contract with the Lions earlier this week ahead of a January move to the English Championship side and he was set to play out the rest of his contract in the Lowland League with Celtic B. But Lanarkshire Live Sports, who exclusively revealed Kelly's move south, understands Kelly is in London and he will likely undergo a medical in the next 24 to 48 hours. Uh, Millwall are hoping he can be involved in the championship clash away the whole city on Saturday. Um, So he's being brought in for the first team then. Uh, It's been a frustrating summer for the Boyhood Hoops fan after he turned down a new four-year deal with the Scottish Championship that's understood to be worth £5,000 a week. Uh, Yeah, well, that's Scottish pounds. And he was frozen out of the first team squad by Sir Bosch Brendan Rodgers as a result. An amicable exit now looks to have been sealed off the mill. Expected the East Kilbride Ace to join in January. So, like I said, they tried to strong arm him into a deal, a massive long term deal, four year deal, and it's 5k a week. You know, well, 5k a week, that's, that's a lot of money. I'm only getting 500 quid a week. Well, yeah, but I mean, what were the terms? Oh, it's a four year deal. What are the terms of getting a pay rise? Is is it going to be five grand a week for four years? And he just has to hope and pray that they decide, oh, in two years' time, oh, you know what, let's give this guy an extra con- a longer contract and more and more money per week. So he probably wanted something that's like, okay, five grand a week and then more and then more and then more, some way to for it to bump up. But, but like I said in the video I made the other day, one of the reasons why he's coming to England now um, is if he does it this season, then he will be counted for he- forever and eternity as a homegrown English player, which gives him an advantage when it comes to getting in match day squads going forward in the English game, whether that's me with me or anyone else. So that will so he's effectively coming to Millwall. Um, being classed as a youth player, uh, even though they're talking about him com- coming into the squad for the whole game, I'm not sure about that. Um, maybe I don't know, but uh, you would ima- imagine that he would have to. Maybe that's on the bench, but phew, I don't know about that. Now we do have an under twenty one game away to Coventry on Tuesday, but if he if he was involved in that, I'd be very surprised. Obviously, if he has the medical on Monday tomorrow and all that gets sorted. Then he could probably if he was if it was a home game he might be involved but to go away to Coventry, not too sure about that. Um, but you never know; weird things have happened. Um, obviously, they played Tanganga in the under twenty one game this week, um, in last week. So, um, obviously, I, he has been playing for the Lowland League though, so he ha- must have some kind of fitness in terms of match fitness. So. Maybe he might be involved the whole way. Maybe, I don't know. But uh, kind of weird that we're signing an 18-year-old midfielder to come into our squad when we already have one called uh, Alfie Massey, who did pretty well against Portsmouth, who are a championship team. So there you go. Uh, Lions boss Neil Harris said on Tuesday, Old Dan has agreed to join the club. A deal has been agreed and he's signed and he officially joins us in January. Uh, he's a young player that we think has got huge potential. Like he's a very good player. And when Dan first walks into the building, he's not going to be someone that everyone should expect to go straight into the team. 
So they've got that quote, but then they're saying, oh, he's going to come into the squad. And like I said, maybe he's going to be, be on the bench, but then if he is a central, does he play central midfield? I, 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 I thought they did play central midfield. Maybe he can play on either wing as well. I don't know. Um, but if he plays in central midfield, then what, he goes on the bench alongside Alfred Massey, so you have two central midfielders on the bench rather than two goalkeepers, uh, I guess. I mean, I, I guess it... Because Neil Harris has been moving Ryan Leonard into midfield, um, which didn't really work. Um, so we'll see. I don't know. Maybe he's bringing him in so he can put him... Bring him off the bench and put him in midfield instead of moving Ryan Leonard into midfield. But uh, we'll see. That looks like the end of the story, and it is, but there's just a load of empty space because they want you to scroll down and look at all the adverts. But we're not going to do that because we're smart. We're not dumb, not like everyone says. Uh, now, that's, that's basically it for the news. So obviously being a Sunday, we're going to move on to the most boring topic in the world and that is statistics uh, this is from whoscored.com and we have here the match report from the game Millwall created a high number of chances relative to their possession stole the ball often from the opposition were effective at creating goal scoring opportunities through individual skill that's you don't go one more I remain essay uh, were create were effective at creating goal scoring opportunities from set pieces but, however, we lost possession often and committed the high number of individual errors. We attacked through the middle, we had a high shot frequency when in possession, and we favoured long balls. So if we go down here, these are the attempts on goal. It's 11 to 15, uh, 9 to 8, uh, so we have more shots. Uh, 9 to 8 open play, 0 to 6 set piece, uh, 2 to 0 counter attack, and 0 to 1 penalty. And that gives us a conversion rate of Mills 20%. And for them, 36%, which again is insanely high. I thought 30% the other day against Watford was high. This is even higher, 36%. That's not good enough. It's not good enough. It's not good enough. Uh, here are the directions. Obviously, it looked like obviously most of the all of the goals came from coming down our left hand side, their right hand side, but actually they came down their left hand side more. Uh, Bristol C, basically they were going down both of the wings, which uh, we were as well. Um, if we go to shot directions, you can see there shot zones and action zones and the player positions. So, interesting. Looks like we've got here, um, basically they overloaded us, uh, we've basically got two, looks like a 2-3-5 formation from Bristol City, just bombing on, um, rather worryingly, the mill, uh, you can see that they basically doubled up 19 and 17, I think they're going down that side, and then 30 and 6 were also kind of on that side as well. And um, meaning Cooper had to be over on the left hand side more, which meant there was a splitting of the centre backs, and we saw that uh, many of many times. Um, do you uh, mark the man or do you mark the space? And kind of caught in between two things. And obviously, following on from yesterday's video, I would say uh, that fourth goal, I was kind of blaming Danny Mack for that, saying he was looking behind him and no one was there. He kept looking behind him, his player in front of him. Having watched it back a couple of times in the highlights, um, I now probably kind of lay the blame onto uh, Leonard and Denor, who were ball watching. And when the guy run, nobody run with him. Um, and they were ball watching when the ball was like uh, over on the on the on the wing, about probably like twenty yards away from them. And what were you doing? What were you doing? I don't know. Um, so yeah, you can see here, but again, the Millwall players, the front three, uh, the three, um, forwards all in the line, uh, just like last, uh, the last game, uh, but Tom Bradshaw way deeper, um, and, uh, Ryan Leonard pushing on again, number 18, 
So there you go. There you go. Um, should we have maybe switched up and gone to three at the back? Especially after it went to three three, maybe that would have been a thing to do. Because he brought Danny Mack on, but then he, he pushed Ryan Leonard into the middle of the pitch. It looked like so. Should Ryan Leonard have just played as the third centre back and Danny Mack have played as the wing back? And we've gone to a, a free centre back or five man, uh, five man back um, defensive line. I don't know, but um, yes, not the best of games yesterday, was it? In terms of uh, football, um, football in uh, uh, ability. Obviously, it was an exciting game to watch. I mean, I was over the moon when we came back to three two. Because uh, I was full. Because obviously, when you go to nil down and you, you're bummed out and you think, "Oh fuck, this is fucking shit," and then you come back to three two and you think, "Oh, here we go, we've won the game," just like Watford did the other week. But no, come back to three three and go, okay, three three. Let's see it out. Let's keep the three three. Let's get the draw, and then no, oh, no, um, we end up losing four three. Absolutely game. This is also from whoscored.com. Here are the match events. Obviously, they scored basically from their first shot on goal. And I think probably their second as well, I think. Um, so here you can see, obviously, we go 2-0 down. And then um, we have to wait until after half time. And then things start to happen for us. We, we get uh, the goals. Uh, they make a couple of substitutions, which is uh, interesting because uh, you can see... The two goal scorers came off and the two players who came on were also ended up being goal scorers. So all four, they did make a late substitute uh, also, but so basically the four players involved in their substitutions all scored. The two strikers are started and the two attackers that uh, came off the bench. Um... And you can see here, so obviously there was some attempt on the 77th minute to bring in reinforcements. Danny Mack coming on from a main essay. I don't remember Mack coming in from Watmore. But that just uh, did nothing because they scored straight after that. Which probably didn't help um, if there was some kind of change of formation or change of what everyone was doing. Because you come on, you tell them to do that and then... They don't really understand, and then they get opened up straight away. And then Macaulay Langstaff comes with Tom Bradshaw uh, for seven minutes at the end of the game. Um, they score on the 88th minute, and then straight away, after bringing on a defender for attacker in terms of Danny Mack for a main essay, you now take off a defender, and you bring on an attacker for a defender, giving Tom Lee his debut. In uh, rather ominous circumstances, uh, surely not an ideal way to make your debut. Coming on for one minute to try and nick, just trying to create something up the other end with the however amount of min a minutes of injury time you're going to get. Um, so yeah, that's not ideal. So here we go. If you look at the club badges at the top left and top right, you can see the average player rating for each uh, club. It's 6.87 for Bristol City, 6.4 for Millwall. So clearly a better team. Um, that's that's a decent uh, size difference in this level. Um, so if we can look, uh, the, the man in the match was Bird. Two assists, probably fair enough. Um, obviously played the whole game. Uh, Armstrong came off and um, Mermetti came off and the two who came on and scored also they didn't play in the whole game so probably Bird yeah, did enough to get the man in the match playing head back because he basically played the whole match uh, in terms of Mill we have again another uh, I've seen a lot of people trying to stick up for Jensen saying they've got none of the goals are his fault but we see here again he is the low, lowest rated player for Mill including the substitutes 5.7 you can't have, we'll find out in a minute how many shots on target, I think it was like seven, but how many, you can't have seven shots on target against you and let four of them in. You just can't do that. 
And yeah, your defence should be doing a better job. But you need to make some saves. I think he only made one save. He did make two saves, but I think they classed one of them as going wide, so they didn't really count it. Uh, and then you've got Leonard. Obviously, he had the the error. Um, I think obviously the, for the first guy, I think he was trying to make contact with the ball, not not have it going towards the goal, and he kind of fluffed it. Uh, five point seven for Leonard, so obviously equal posi- last position, and then Denor with five point eight. So obviously, both two of those players were booked. Denor and Jensen, maybe that has an effect on their score at this website. Um, but their player Sykes is booked, and he's got six point four. So, um, and then Hutch with six point one. Now, in terms of the highest rated player for Millwall, Romain Sa seven point seven. I mean, he was. He was on fire yesterday, and then Duncan Watmore seven point five, um, and then Bradshaw seven point two. I think that's purely just because he scored that goal. Um, because other than that, his numbers don't look that good, as we we're about to see as we go through. So total shots, five shots for Bradshaw. So other than the penalty, he had four shots, and he didn't score. We got SA with two. One more with three. So, two shots for SA, one goal. There you go. How about that? Um, possession wise, obviously, we again, not a lot of possession 61 to 38. Um, the player with the most possession for Millwall was George Savile. 5.5% 5. 5% of the match time was with him. Uh, pass success percentage. Our passing was not good. Was not good at all. Um, did not. Not really finding mill players. Um, quite low for a lot of players. Denor eighty nine percent. Uh, SA seventy four. Bradshaw seventy three. Uh, Brian 75 and Jensen down in 24% that is that is atypical that's kind of typical old school kick it along goalkeeper that is that's how it goes uh, dribbles 4 to 3 aerials 1 29 to 15 again no Aerials one up front, basically, you can see here the entire back line for Bristol City. Dickie with six, Pring with eight, Vino with three, and Bradshaw with one, Cooper with six. Um, tackles 14 to 20, so obviously, we did win the tackles 14 to 20. Uh, Joe Bryan, not a tackle to be made, uh, which is kind of the point like um being out of position being go- going forward and and uh, not being in the right position to make a tackle uh we, we saw all of the bristol's goals come down our uh, left hand side and kind of troubling well i guess it's the way we play now with the high press when you've got romaine essay having the most amount of tackles other than george savile on the pitch, he's got more than all of the defenders, nearly put together. Leonard with two, Hutch with one, and Cooper with one. And SA's got three tackles just under his own name. Um, corners, so these are the players who won the corners, not who took them. Uh, dist possessed, having the ball taken off you. Yeah, that happens quite a lot when you're an attacking player. Um, so, moving on to the numbers, if we see, so obviously, what was it? How many how many shots did I have again? Was it 16? 11? 3, 4, 5, uh, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Yes, yeah, so I had 11. 11 shots. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 on target. They scored 4 goals from 6 shots on target. That's not good enough. It's not good enough. Um, so, how many did we score? We had four shots on target. We scored three goals. So again, the attackers were outperforming. Other than Tom Bradshaw, we got on in a minute. So that back, 
the front three, um, not including the, the striker, Bradshaw, they seem to be doing all the work and, and lifting lifting the club out of the shit that they get themselves in when they go 2-0 up. Um, you can see Tom Bradshaw, five shots, two on target. Remember, one of them was a penalty, so you take that away, it's four and one. Um, Ariel's one, one. Um, Duncan Wattmore, three and one, two and one. Jewel Savile, two and zero. So, um, touches of the ball. George Savile, 67, Leonard, 60. And then we massive drop down to 49 for Jay Cooper, 49 for Honeyman, 48 for Joe Ryan, etc., etc. And uh, 26 for Tom Bradshaw, who had less touches than the goalkeeper. Goalkeeper had 28 touches of ball, although that was in 90 minutes, to be fair. Tom Bradshaw only played 82 minutes and had 26 touches of the ball. Um, if we go down to the ratings, you can see Romain SA, the best middle player on the pitch, 7.68, 7.54 for Watmore, 7.24 for Bradshaw, 7.07 for Honeyman, and 7.06 for George Savile, and then everyone else. And then a massive drop, under 6.5, Joe Bryan and the rest. Jay Cooper, 6.15, you got Hutch with 6.05, um, and then you have players who started on the pitch. See, so Casper Denor played, uh, he played the 90 minutes, didn't he? Leonard played the 90 minutes, Lucas Jensen played the 90 minutes, and three of the substitutes who came on got a higher score than they did. Even Tom Lee, Tom Lee touched the ball once, he had. Two minutes plus injury time, which was what seven minutes. He got five point nine seven rating. Dinor got five five point eight three. Leonard five point seven one. Obviously, he had the knock on his head. He had the 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 plaster on his head or whatever it was, the bandage. Um, should he have played? And then you got Lucas Jensen five point seven. The uh, the undroppable goalkeeper that everyone seems to be um, defending. Oh. He's he's coming. Obviously, he, he's the one we paid money for, and he's the one expected to be number one. But, bro, you conceded seven goals in two games. Um, I think it's time to give the other guy a go. Uh, because if you play again and you are dog shit again, it's going to be even worse for you. Um, so we'll wait and see what happens next week. I mean. Doesn't look good. Um, was anyone offside? Tom Bradshaw was offside. Um, key passes. George Honeyman, Ryan Leonard, and then them. Defensively, again, we've seen. So, George Savile had six tackles. Romain S had three. The, the uh, attacking right winger, sort of, like outside right, had three tackles. And your right back had two tackles. And then it's all other players. Danny McNamara obviously getting slated um, for his performance. But he had two tackles. He, he came on 76 minutes. He He's getting stuck in. He's getting two tackles. Which is more than Hutch did. He's got, he did as many tackles as and Hutch and Cooper did together. Um... So yeah, and again, Joe Bryan, no tackles. Obviously, maybe he did some other stuff. Interceptions, he did interceptions. Three interceptions for Joe Bryan, two clearances and one block shot. Okay. Uh, in terms of block shots, let's go to that. So he was, he was the only one who blocked a shot. So that's why the goal, goalkeeper had to face so many shots, on seven shots on target. Because only one of them was blocked. Because everyone wasn't nowhere near where they needed to be. Uh, interceptions, we've seen them. Clearances. Sean Hutchinson, 7. Jake Cooper, 6. Joe Ryan, 2. Casper, 1. Tom Bradshaw, 1. So there you go. Um, so, that's that. And we're just going to have a quick look on this and see the XG. Because I know you love the XG. If 
I don't know what that means. It means expected goals. What do you mean expected goals? We know how many goals there were. Well, there was four for Bristol City and three for Millwall. Well, no. Um, because there have been so many games of football played, they know um, when someone takes a shot, how many times it goes in. So, basically, a penalty spot kick um, is 0.8 XG. Because eight times out of ten... Penalties are scored. Um, so that's how it goes. So you can see here, um, both teams outperform their XG, but Mill by a lot more because if you take that penalty spot off, uh, it's 2.7 to Bristol City and it's 2.1 to Mill. Um, so that would suggest it probably should have been 3 2. But if you take the 0.8 penalty kick off of Mill, that drops us down a lot, a lot. So let's get into it. Um, so you can see there. So the saves, their keeper had one, made one save of three shots on target. That's thirty-three percent. Our keeper made two saves of six on target, thirty-three percent. But I think we see one of those got, was going wide. Uh, we've got more numbers here. We've got fouls, 11 to 12. Uh, corners, 5 to 4. Uh, crosses, 14 for Bristol City, 19 for Millwall. Touches the ball, 6, 7, 7, 2, 4, 4, 4. Uh, Bristol City, 14 to 20 tackles, 2 to 10 interceptions. 28 to 15 aerials, 1. Yes, why are we pumping long balls up to Tom Bradshaw? It is not working. Get someone else on or stop doing that. 35 to 18 clearances, uh, offsides one each, goal kicks. For some reason, I don't know why they're not they're not measuring the kicking of Lucas Jensen. This website, I don't know why that's happening. Uh, 24 to 19 throw-ins. Obviously, we did get that goal. Duncan Momo's goal did come from that throw-in. Uh, second ball from a throw-in. Uh, 63 to 64 long balls. So obviously they were pumping long balls, but they had uh, someone to get on the end of them in terms of Sinclair Armstrong. Um, so. I'm not going to, to be honest, I'm not going to go through all this stuff because it's kind of boring to be honest. But what I do like looking at is this. So. These are all the shots in the game, and it gives you an XG for each shot. Okay, so if I can, okay, provided by Opta. So I don't know why Opta aren't providing the data for uh, Lucas Trends' kicking, but so expected goals, expected goals, PSXG, post shot expected goals is expected goals based on how likely. The goalkeeper is to save the shot. Okay. So the lower the PSXG, the more that that keeper should save it. And we see here, their their Bristol City's goals, right? Basically, like I said, the first shot on target. So these are the, the list of all shots on target. So they had in the first half, <coughs> they had four shots on target. They scored with the first two. Well, that is just insane. We're back to Gary Rowett territory because that used to happen under him all the time. Um, so you can see here why I'm mentioning the goalkeeper, Jensen, and everyone's defending him. The XG of that shot was 0 0.41. Based on after... Whether the goalkeeper was going to save it or not, it doubles. It goes to 0 0.82. Basically, that goalkeeper should have saved it. Or should have done more. 0 0.35 nearly doubles to 0 0.64. And when you go to Millwall's goals, again, Roman say that his goal was insane. This suggests incredible skill. To go from a point naught six, because he had all these defenders and, and Tom Bradshaw standing in front of him, to to weave that through those defenders and then take the shot. After he took the shot, that should, well, the, the chances of that going into the goal 
was 0.24. That was the expected goals. So basically, 10 times when he does that, it's only going to go into the net twice. Okay? So it's very low. And then, like we said with Tom Bradshaw, the penalty is 0.79. The chances, the thing, he went up a little bit, 0.81, because the goalkeeper dived the wrong way. If the goalkeeper, goalkeeper dived the wrong way and kind of dived over it, it probably went, the post shot XG would have went down, but it went up. Okay? And then we get to Duncan Warmore's goal. That, that was an insane bit of quality talent. Like, that was insane. I, I, I mentioned it at the time, yesterday's video. What he did there is entirely underrated. He basically pulled, he swung his leg up, but didn't strike through the ball. He just kind of pulled it, so just the ball just touched his foot. And it went straight into the top corner. And that was a 0.06. And that ended up post-shot XG of 0.09. Basically, the goalkeeper couldn't do nothing about that. That was a wonder strike. But then this is definitely Bristol City's third goal is the one that I think... That's the, basically the P-roller that rolled on the ground into the corner of the goal. And that's the one that I certainly think Jensen should have done better with. And you can see here, 0.19. After he's kicked it, it goes up to 0.53. Um, so, and the one at the end, 0.41 to 0.77. So again... These aren't one of the goals that they're scoring, Bristol C. Mill's goals are one of the goals because the post shot XG was low. And it, it it's low. It sh they should have been saved, but they, they couldn't have been saved. If, if, if you know what I mean. Whereas the, um, the Bristol goals, they sh they, no, something should have been done about them. Because if you still want to like, because the post shot XG jumps up from the XG by a lot, that suggests that there's something wrong in the goalkeeping department. And you can go even look the one at the end that got saved, Falimulu. It got saved because the post shot XG was not the keeper was in the right place. It's 0.39 from 0.34. So because the keeper was positioned properly, he saved it. And the post shot XG was only a little bit higher. So that meant he saved it. Um, and you can see here, uh, this one was saved as well apparently. Uh, Max Bird. The post shot XG went down. So that was a save that the keeper should have made. And he did make it. Because it went down. It, it was 0.41. After the shot was made, and the goalkeeper was in the right place, 0.34. Um, and then these ones were off target, so... Um, yeah, there you go. Um, like I said, I'm not I'm not hating on, on Jensen, but... Him and Roberts were both... Proved themselves at a high standard in League One. And obviously Jensen got the plaudits because I think he got the most... Did he get the golden glove in, in League One? He got the most clean sheets. But Robert's the one who got in the playoffs. Remember that. Jensen was at Lincoln. They didn't get in the playoffs. Roberts was at Barnsley. They did get in the playoffs. They didn't make it through the semi-finals, but they did get in the playoffs. So, there you go. Let's, that's something to think about as well. Winning mentality. Um... Warrior mindset, whatever you want to call it. Uh, it's not about athletics and being the best um, physical uh, specimen. It's about performing as a professional athlete when you need to do it. So, like I said, um, it, if we don't change goalkeepers next game, I'm going to be highly disappointed. Um, so we'll wait and see. And on that note, thank you for watching, and uh, goodbye. Oh, Danny boy.